All right, in this video, we're going to pick up where we left off. After we added a mouse, um, we're going to look at adding buttons to our graphics user interface. And to give you an idea of what I'm going to cover in this video, uh, we're going to look at adding the art. We're going to create a button class. Then we're going to create a button object. Then we're going to add functionality to that button. And then we will test our buttons out. So to get started, let's look at adding the artwork. I've got a button sprite sheet here. I've got, um, it's just text. One side represents the normal state of the button and the other side will represent the highlighted state. So when my mouse passes over this button, the art is gonna switch from this version to this version. And the size of this image is 800 by 800. You can make yours whatever size you want, but it's important to know what size it is and how much space each button occupies. Each one of my buttons occupies um, 100 pixels tall and 400 pixels wide. If you want to get some ideas for button artwork, you can always just run a search for GUI buttons and um, lots of cool ideas out there. So either download or create your button art and make sure you add that PNG to your project folder. The next thing we're going to do is create a button class. So I'm going to right click up here and we'll click on new C++ class. And I will just call this button. Let's step over to the header file. I'm going to delete the copy constructor. And I don't use private variables. And now we need a few things for our button. The first thing we're going to need is that sprite sheet. So that's coming in as an SDL texture. And then we need two rectangles. And I'll call it srect for the source and drect for the destination. And then the last thing I like to have for my button is a bool and I just call it is selected. Initialize it to false. We use this bool to keep track of whether or not the mouse is hovering over the button. And now we need two functions. We need a void update. And our update function is going to need our mouse cursor. So we will pass in our mouse here. And I'll pass by reference. And to do that, we will need to include mouse up at the top. And then we need a draw function. And now we can step over into the source file and define these two guys. For the constructor, we're going to load in our sprite sheet. And as long as all the buttons are going to be on one sprite sheet, we only need to load that in once. So I'm going to use a static variable. And I use a static variable because static variables are only initialized once. And we call load texture, pass in the renderer and the name of your sprite sheet. And then we can set our texture pointer equal to T. Now for my sprite sheet, because my buttons are all the same size and I figure I will use the same size within the program, there are a few things I can initialize with the rectangles. For the source rectangle, the height will always be 100 for me. For my sprite sheet, because each button is 100 pixels tall, I can set that height right here, 100. And the width is 400. I can also set the X value because I'm always starting on the far left side of the sprite sheet. So that can be initialized to zero. The Y value cannot be initialized in the constructor. Um, because the Y value will change depending on which button I'm loading in. The destination rectangle, we can set the height and the width. We can't really set the X or the Y. The height, you can choose to keep it the same or you may want to change it up a little bit. I'm going to reduce the size 
but I draw it in my program by about 25%. So the height will be 75 and the width will go down to 300. And that's it for my constructor. Now we can move on to the update function. And don't forget to pass in your mouse. In our update function, we want to know, is the mouse colliding with the button? So we have a function that can check that for us. We'll write an if statement and we will call SDL has intersection. Has intersection receives two arguments. It's going to be your first rectangle. That will be our destination rectangle for our button. And the second one will be our mouse point. And don't forget to pass by reference. Now, if this is true, if we do have a collision, the first thing we're going to do is set our bool is selected to true. And the next thing we want to do is change our source sprite. So srect.x, I want to slide it from the left side of the sprite sheet over to this right side, the selected side of the sprite sheet. So based on the width of your sprite sheet and the layout, you need to change at least the x value here. My y value stays the same, so I'm not going to mess with that. And then we need to write an else. This selected will go back to false so that the button will change back when the mouse moves away. And then we set our rectangles X back to zero. And that's it for the update function. The last thing we need to do is the draw function. And that's going to be real simple. We're just going to make a call to render copy. We're going to pass in our renderer, our texture, the address of our source rectangle, and the address of our destination rectangle. And that's it for the draw function. All right, we've created our button class. Let's create a button. I'm going to create a start button, and I'm going to do that inside main, uh, but outside of the main loop. So we'll just create it right before the main loop. Before I can do that though, I need to include button up at the top. Button brings mouse with it, so there's no need to include mouse up here anymore. Now above the main loop, I'll just call this start button. And when I create the button, I will need to initialize the parts of the rectangle I did not initialize in the constructor. So to start with our source rectangle for the Y value on my sprite sheet is the very first one. So that Y value is going to be zero up here at the very top. And then for the destination rectangle, the X value, I want it to be in the very middle of the screen. Right now my screen is 500 by 500. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna to go to 1280 by 720. 720 tall, 1280 wide. Now to center my button on the screen, I wanna take half of that 1280. And you can actually do that math or you can have the compiler do it for you. So 1280 divided by two. And then I want to shift the button that will put the left side of the button in the center of the screen. If I want to actually center the button, then I have to scoot it back to the left, uh, half the width of the button. So direct dot W divided by two. I'm sorry, start button dot direct W divided by two. And that puts our X position in the middle of the screen. And now we need to set the Y position. And this number can just be wherever you think is a good idea. We are a total of 720 pixels tall. So 
I don't know. I'm just going to put it at 200 and we'll go from there. So my button is created. The values are initialized. Now I can update this somewhere in my main loop. I can update it right after I update the mouse. That might be just fine. So start button dot update and pass in the mouse. And then we need to draw. So the button should be drawn before the mouse, but after everything else. And now let's see if it shows up. It won't do anything, but it should show up on the screen. And then we've got our start button. And if my mouse comes in contact with it, you can see it moves to the selected state. And when the mouse moves away, we go back to our normal state. And everything else still works just fine. All right, to get mouse input, we're going to our while loop, our pull event loop, and we'll create a case for SDL underscore mouse button up. And anytime a mouse button is clicked and comes up, it will trigger this case. Now we can limit that input to just the left mouse button if we want to. We can use an if statement. And we look at our event, which was called E. And we look at button, which is mouse buttons. And then we do dot button again. And if that is equal to SDL underscore button left, then everything in this if statement hinges on the left mouse button being clicked. So if the left mouse button is clicked, we can check to see if our button is selected. To test this out, I'm going to switch my terminal to an external terminal. You can do that by right clicking on your project and going down to properties, click on run and change this option from internal to external and click OK. And then inside here, I'm just going to print a see out message. Start button has been clicked. That should work for a simple test. So let's test it out. I've got my output window over here in the background and I click start and I see start button has been clicked. And you should see that output every time you click your start button. Let's do one more. We'll add an exit button. And if you added too many of these, you would want to use an array. And you could also clean up some of this initialization if you wanted to. You could use functions or something like that, and that could be a lot cleaner. But um, this gets the point across without getting too complicated. So we'll make an exit button. I'm just going to copy this information up here and modify it a little bit for my exit button. The first thing I need to change is the name because we're now dealing with exit instead of start. And then I need to change these values. So my source rectangle is not going to be a zero for exit. Exit is my very last button. I know that each button is 100 pixels tall. So I go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's going to be at 700 for me on this sprite sheet. The X value will stay the same because I want it centered on the screen and I want to position it right below the start button. So to move it down, I can put this at 300. Now I will need to update. And pass in my mouse. And I need to draw. So we do that down here and then I need to add an if statement for my exit button. If the exit button is selected and the left mouse click comes through, we're just going to end the program and that's going to be the same code uh, that we did up here for the SDL quit. We we'll just set running equal to false and then you could uh, call SDL quit or return zero 
whatever you, whatever else you want to do there to close the program. So let's test that out. And now we got both buttons. We click start. We see our start message over there. We click exit and it closes the program. So everything works just fine. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck.